Thanks very much. Uh, time's 5.38. Uh, well, let's have a look at what's going on uh, in Washington because uh, President Trump is already on his way from Andrews Air Force Base to Florida. And he's going there because he's spending the weekend, next few days anyway, uh, at Mar-a-Lago. That the, that's the Trump Golf Resort. And he will be uh, hosting a summit there uh, in, uh, in Florida, focusing really on relationships with China. And he's already said he's expecting a rather difficult meeting, summit meeting with uh, President uh, Xi Jinping of China. Um, and he'll be meeting him there over the next uh, couple of days or so. Uh, there has been lots of expectation around this summit, not least because, of course, President Trump himself has said some rather, well, uh, confrontational things, I suppose, to do with trade and, uh, and other issues to do with North Korea as well. So, President is now on his way on uh, Air Force One and will be uh, landing in Florida um, uh, fairly soon. So, let's, uh, let's hang on to those images now while we do as the uh, President's on his way because while we look at them, I want to bring in my special guest today who is Professor uh, Leslie Young, who is an economics professor at Beijing's uh, Cheung Kong Graduate School of Business. Professor, thank you very much for coming in. It's good to have you with us. We're going to just watch these images as the President uh, is preparing to take off for Florida. And while we watch them, why don't you tell us what is he likely to meet in terms of the perspective and the attitude of the Chinese party when they come? Well, we should, I should first emphasize that Mr. Trump and especially his daughter is actually very popular in China. You know, he's rich, crass, glitzy, multiple wives, he likes building walls, he has good relationship with his family. So, you know, he ticks pretty much all the boxes as far as up and coming Chinese are concerned. As far as Chinese leaders are concerned, he's just great. You know, he's, you know, he's discrediting democracy. He's not interested in human rights. He's destroying U.S. soft power. He's handed them leadership of the international economy on a plate by shutting down TPP. So all they want to do is get through the next few days without him throwing a bomb, like you know, levying 45% tariffs, to which they would have to respond aggressively. So I think their ambitions are very limited. Just get through this and then they just love them. That's, uh, well, that's quite an insight. Um, I mean, you talk about the personal style and all the rest mm -hmm. of it, but um, um, is it really a matter of them trying to contain the summit then? It's just containing the outcome of the content or do yeah. they want to walk away from this summit with a real outcome, something that they can boast about? Well, I think they've they read him pretty carefully. They know he's more into political gestures rather than serious economics. So they'll probably offer him some gestures that he can use to, to placate his base and assume that he'll, his attention will switch somewhere else and, they'll, and then he's just their ideal president. How, uh, uh, just, just in terms of the preparation, because of course, you know, after the meeting with Chancellor Merkel, there was um, a, a lot of talk there about the fact that uh, Angela Merkel had been rather, I suppose, uh, uh, rather surprised by the fact the president did t tend to jump from subject to subject. Yes. Um, the Chinese will have prepared for this summit in great detail? Oh, intensively. There'll be massive briefing books. They will have studied the situation very carefully. They know his political situation. They know his organizational skills. They, he's, they, he's re they've read him very carefully. I dare, really, he does not have an advisor who has any real knowledge of China, so it's all one-sided. Um, we should underline, I suppose, notwithstanding what you just said about the, the Chinese approach, that they must surely recognise that he too would like to come out of this summit saying that he's won something, that he's won some kind of concession, not least in the area, possibly, of trade, where he says that the Chinese have been, you know, taking advantage of the Americans. They understand his political needs, I'm sure, and so they'll give him something that he needs politically. He's in a difficult situation politically at the moment, so they'll give him some gestures that he can wave around. I'm sure they'll do that. Um, let's talk about North Korea, mm -hmm. because this is bound to come up in some form, yes. and the fact that President Trump has said, look, this is actually the fault of China for not really using their influence in this area. Had China, had China intervened in a proper way, this situation wouldn't have arisen. Um, is that an argument that irritates or is that an argument that, that rings any alarm bells in Beijing? Or, and, and what are they likely to do when that comes up in these talks? Well, they've heard this all before and I th the situation in North Korea is explosive as far as China is concerned. You could be a few million refugees coming across the border. They could, uh, the regime collapse would be a disaster for China. So the current situation is not good for China, but it's 
is better than anything else that might happen. So uh, once again, they are in the business, I think, of just containing the situation. So, so if he's in the business of demanding that they use more influence, what is the response likely to be? Well, they won't say no, but in fact, it's clear that the they cannot respond in the way that he wants. It's too dangerous for them. So they'll just be polite and, and say, let's discuss it further. Uh, just, uh, this may sound like a, a slightly odd question about the, the geographical location. Will they find it odd that this summit is taking place in this golf resort in Florida? How will they respond to that, given that we were used to... When the, when the state visit happened in the UK, we were told that they liked the fact that there was great formality around the entire visit. Um... Well, I think they have to accept this as part of the personality of Mr. Trump. And they, I mean, they know how to play the game. They've already given him a lot of sweeteners under the table to his family business. So, you know, he's an, he's an intelligible personality to them. Yeah, a crass, loud billionaire. They, they've got lots of those in China. So one more. <laughs> they know. Um, and, and just uh, last one, Leslie. When, when he says this is going to be very difficult because, you know, he wants to couch it in those terms, um, do you expect it to be very difficult? Because the way you've described it, mm -hmm. they seem to have a plan, they want to come out of it in a, in a way which is where, where there's no damage. Um, I'm just wondering how difficult do they think it's going to be? I think they, they're fairly relaxed about it because they know that his, his political position is very weak, he doesn't have much of administration behind him. They just want to get through this without a blow-up, and then they'll be very happy. Let's have a look at those images again at uh, Andrews Air Force Base. Are they still there? Well, look, there you go, uh, Professor Young. They still haven't taken off. Um, but um, Professor Trump is on board, and he'll be taking off quite soon to go to Florida, as I say, to host that summit with uh, the Chinese president uh, and other members of the Chinese government. So uh, uh, I'm sure we'll see the images of them taking off a little later on. But, uh, Professor Young, good to talk to you, mm -hmm. and a fascinating insight, indeed, ahead of this summit. So thank you for coming in. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Professor Leslie Young.